the development in the notorious Mr. Cruel case. Today, 25 years since the abduction and murder of Carmen Chan, police posted a $1 million reward for information on the teenager's death. Tonight, we confront the man who admits to being the prime suspect. Reid Butler has this exclusive report and joins me now. Reid. Thanks, Tracy. Exactly 25 years ago tonight, the man known only as Mr. Cruel crept into the home behind me and abducted 13-year-old Carmen Chan. Now, her body was found a year later and she is Mr. Cruel's last known victim. Now, over the years, police have been unable to identify her attacker, but they have spoken to tens of thousands of people in relation to the case. From that, they've managed to whittle that group down to a handful of key persons of interest. And the one you're about to meet, he's told us that he's their prime suspect. Are you surprised that they think you're a suspect? No. You're not surprised? No, no not at all. This is a crime that affected individuals at unprecedented extent. You did attack six girls at knife point. One of them was 15 years of age. It's no surprise that police believe that you're the suspect. Some describe him as a monster, and I think that's probably accurate. Young girls snatched from their homes in the middle of the night, taken by a creeping, masked attacker armed with a knife and a gun. Most were released, but only after being subjected to unspeakable horror. This is my daughter! One victim, Carmen Chan, was killed. Every parent's nightmare to find that one of your children has been uh, abducted and murdered. The man responsible is only known as Mr Cruel. He's still out there. This could still happen again. Tonight, A Current Affair takes you inside the mind of one of Australia's sickest criminals and will also confront the man who admits to being the prime suspect, a convicted sex offender who was jailed for unrelated crimes but is now living in suburbia, just metres from a local school. You, you do admit that you're the prime suspect, though? Well, I, I know I am because they've told me. In my view, this was... Uh, very close to, if not the crime of the century in Victoria. Retired detective Chris O'Connor says the attacks triggered the biggest police investigation in Australian history at the time. It extended beyond Victoria, beyond Australia, all Australian law enforcement agencies. The UK and the FBI assisted us uh, in different aspects as well. It's because the attacker's crimes were so cruel and calculated and his victims were so young and innocent. This crime highlighted the need for serious child protection in Australia. The mystery offender targeted young girls across Melbourne in the late 1980s and early 1990s. In 1987, Mr Cruel breaks into a family home and rapes an 11-year-old girl. In 1988, he abducts 10-year-old Sharon Wills and assaults her. She's released 18 hours later. In 1990, he snatches 13-year-old Nicola Linus from her home, assaults her and frees her after 50 hours. And in 1991, Mr Cruel abducts and murders 13-year-old Carmen Chan. Her remains are found a year later. Here were young children randomly um, selected and taken from their own homes and subjected to some unspeakable events. Dr David Wells is a clinical forensic physician who treated the victims Mr Cruel released. So these sorts of events uh, have a potentially devastating effect on individuals and uh, extended families and communities. He recalls the terror felt by the community at the time the attacker was abducting little girls. Many families develop this almost siege mentality. Fears skyrocketed when Mr Cruel's last known victim, Carmen Chan, was found dead in a shallow grave a year after being taken. She'd been shot three times in the back of the head. It's believed the 13-year-old may have been murdered because she'd somehow identified her kidnapper. The logical conclusion is that uh, he would kill the child, so she could not pass any information on him. Carmen's death tore her family apart and sent police into overdrive. We uh, believe it's an addiction and uh, there's no doubt this uh, person will continue to offend until he's caught. 
But it appears Mr. Krull did stop carrying out abductions in the area, with detectives unable to link any more crimes to the violent offender. The Spectrum Task Force was formed and ran for three years. So, I mean, I've worked on many, many task forces in my time, and this is the only one that uh, wasn't resolved with somebody being charged. More than 27,000 people were interviewed and 30,000 homes were examined as part of the investigation. It's believed the victims were kept in a suburban home under Melbourne Airport's flight path. This police drawing was released after the little girls described the bedroom they were held captive in. In the end, police were left with a handful of sex predators they were unable to rule out as being Mr Cruel. Former Melbourne University arts lecturer Brian Enkler is among them. Just a few questions about the Mr Cruel investigation. Uh, no, I don't want to talk to you. He was jailed for 10 years in the 1970s after pleading guilty to tying up and attacking six girls at knife point over a two-year period. You assaulted six girls. You raped I one went, at knife point. I went to jail for all that. It's all past. 1974. You destroyed their lives. So you say. But, I mean, what you're doing now is equally disgusting. I don't think it's equally I'm disgusting. Innocent. The convicted sex criminal has been questioned extensively over the Mr Cruel crimes that all occurred after his release from prison. You did attack six girls at knife point. One of them was 15 years of age. It's no surprise that police believe that you're the suspect. Detectives reportedly found a balaclava and knife hidden in the roof of Inkler's Thornbury home during their investigation. He admits to being the prime suspect but denies any involvement. A current affair is not suggesting he is guilty, just that he is a person of interest. One of the things that has always baffled police about these crimes is the lack of forensic evidence. There was barely any of it there. And of course that's made things extremely difficult for investigators. We come across crimes from time to time. Jack the Ripper is a classic example. There wasn't any evidence of the right type that assisted the investigation. Chris O'Connor says Mr Krull was extremely intelligent and an expert at removing any shred of forensic evidence. The key point to this, his behaviour was his level of discipline. Emotionally, practically and forensically was one of the highest I'd ever encountered. It's fair to say that if there was very strong evidence, um, there would be a much higher likelihood of an earlier resolution. Forensic pathologist Henrik Bauer from the Victorian Institute of Forensic Medicine is among experts who believe Mr Krull knew exactly how to cover his tracks. I think it's highly possible, you know, if you know what evidence there is and how to dispose of it, it's very highly likely that um, you can get rid of those evidence and people will not find any trace. Because of that, his identity remains very much a mystery and 25 years on from Carmen Chan's murder, police are not giving up. Today, uh, the Homicide Squad's announcing a reward of uh, a million dollars um, for information uh, relating to the... Uh, abduction and murder of Carmen Chan. Victoria Police Assistant Commissioner Stephen Fontana. We do appeal to people that may know the offender to please come forward and provide that information to us. I, I welcome it certainly for, for a number of reasons. Importantly, those most affected, the, the girls themselves, their families, can appreciate that we haven't forgotten about them. There's got to be someone out there who knows something. It may be the most obscure piece of information that may be the spark uh, to resolving this. If you can help police with their investigation, you are urged to call Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. That's 1800 333 000.